Hello my dear friends, in this video I should like to emphasize that as long as you remain within the central inner circle that lies within the pupillary area, you can safely perform phaco emulsification even in very very small pupils without needing pupil dilating devices. What you see is the maximum pupillary dilation achieved with pharmacological agents. Phenocaine intracamerally again is not going to add additional width to this pupil simply because the topical medications pass transcornially and transclerally and act on the same receptors as intracameral agents. The trick is to perform a capsular rexis that is slightly larger than the pupil diameter and therefore you need to carry some part of the rexus at least behind the pupillary plane and then with a careful control of the capsular rexus you should be able to complete it. Cortical cleavage hydrodissection is extremely important because this nucleus needs to rotate. Now let's move on to the phaco emulsification part and this is totally unedited and that is the central 2 mm inner circle. Well the aim of this video is that as long as the phaco probe remains within the central 2 mm zone and as long as you apply power only in this region then you can safely get by with phaco emulsification even if the pupil is extremely small. You will notice that throughout the surgery that I am applying phaco emulsification only within the central inner circle of 2 millimeters. So if you use sufficient amount of vacuum in this case 350 millimeters of mercury and I am using a power only about 25% because it is a soft grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract and then when you have a good hold you can use the sharp chopper to take it to the mid periphery of the nucleus by retracting the iris gently and then creating the chop. So when you have cracked the nucleus down into at least four to five pieces then it is wise to bring out the sharp chopper and then replace it with a Sinsky hook which is more forgiving within the eye. You don't want to nick the edge of the capsular rexis during the emulsification. So with the Sinsky hook, I gently retract the iris. I'm using the phaco probe. It goes slightly to the periphery, but this is only vacuum. I'm not giving phaco power at all. Now once the piece is held and brought into the pupillary zone, you can use the nucleus fragment as a strut astride the pupillary plane in order to keep the pupil from going down further and then staying only within the central area of 2 to 3 millimeters within the pupil. So if you have a concentric ring imagined in your head that lies bang in the center of the pupil, that's where the phaco probe needs to be. The vacuum, the aspiration flow rate as well as the emulsification with the application of intermittent power is enough in order to propel the pieces towards the phaco probe. You see that the phaco probe is not going towards the pieces, it's the pieces that keep coming towards the phaco probe and getting emulsified. Now this is possible because of the fluidics of any machine that you have. Just depend and rely on the aspiration flow rate and the vacuum to bring the pieces to the phaco tip. The other thing you can do is once you impale onto a fragment, if the fragment is large, you can make it sit astride the pupil. Then you can emulsify this piece in the pupillary plane, giving very, very short bursts of phaco power and using to a large extent just vacuum in order to emulsify the pieces. In a systematic fashion, just using and taking advantage of phaco dynamics, I'm able to get the entire nucleus out in this pupil, which you will admit seldom was more than 2.5 to 3 millimeters throughout the entire procedure. The removal of cortex is not going to be easy without retracting the iris. So you have to retract the iris, visualize the cortex and then aspirate it. 
The device that works best in my hands is a Y hook. You can also use other devices to retract the pupil like you can use a Kuglin's hook. A Sinsky hook however will not fit the bill because the iris tends to slip over the Sinsky hook and therefore it's not an ideal instrument to retract the iris. In a systematic fashion, I retract, visualize and then I am able to remove all the cortex from even underneath the subincisional area and once I have cleaned up the capsular bag, satisfactorily it is time to implant the intraocular lens. The implantation of the intraocular lens, I am going to use a technique by which I am trying to deliver the lens at one go in a single shot within the capsular bag and for this I carry the cartridge bevel right up again to the inner circle. So you see that the bevel of the cartridge is there right in the center of the pupil and as you inject and as the lens gets delivered you just push the trailing haptic as it emerges from the cartridge into the capsular bag. In 9 out of 10 cases, you will succeed in getting the lens into the capsular bag with this maneuver. Thank you for your attention.